Hi, I'm Bob Flisser, and I want to show you a great tool that was introduced in Adobe Illustrator CS5. It's called the Shape Builder tool, and it helps you combine shapes, just as the name sounds. Now, you might be familiar with the Pathfinder tool, and the Pathfinder tool has been in Illustrator for many versions, and what it'll do is if you have shapes kind of like this, or even shapes that are more complicated, it'll help you combine them in different ways. The problem is the Pathfinder tool is not very intuitive, and a lot of people just end up doing a lot of trial and error trying to use it. So the Shape Builder tool makes it a little easier and certainly a lot more interactive. So that's what I'm going to show you here. First, let me zoom in on that area. I'm going to hold down the Control key and Spacebar. If you're on the Mac, you could hold down the Command key and Spacebar. That gives me the Zoom tool. And I'll zoom in just on the corner there. And I'm just going to delete these Actually, before I do that, I just want to let you know that you still do have the Pathfinder tool available. You can still go to the window menu and get the Pathfinder tool, but we're not going to look at that in this tutorial. Let me just select these and delete them. I'll just drag over and delete. What I'll do is this. I'm going to get the ellipse tool, and I just want to draw a circle. Now, if I simply do it freehand, I could end up with a cigar shape, egg shape, whatever you call it. But I'll hold down the Shift key, so the Shift key constrains it in proportion, so I know I'm dragging a perfect circle. It gives me the default, which is white fill and black stroke. I want that to be a little bit more interesting. So I'll go up here. I'm going to choose, let's say, a yellow fill and a stroke that's maybe navy blue. And I want that stroke to be a little thicker, so I'll go over here and I'll do maybe five points. I want a few others, so I'm going to go and get the selection tool. I'll put my mouse pointer on it. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to hold down the Alt key. If you're on the Mac, you could hold down the Option key. And you notice that gives you kind of a two-headed arrow. And I'll drag, and that will drag a copy. I want a different fill and a different stroke. And I'm going to be doing this a whole bunch of times. So rather than going up here all the time, I'm going to bring up my Swatches palette. I'll click that, and I'm just going to put my mouse pointer on this gray area here. And I'll just drag it out onto the screen. So let's say I'll give that a green fill. I'll click the stroke thing here, and I'll make that say this color, whatever color that is. Okay, great. Now, I still want a whole bunch more, so I'm going to go back to it, and I'm going to hold down the Alt key again, and I'm going to drag a whole bunch. And I want to give them different colors, and the reason I'm doing that is just so you can see really what's going on. I'll simply start with this one, and by the way, notice that because I dragged a circle that has a green fill and a red stroke, that's what is showing up over there. Kind of festive holiday colors. So I'll start with this one, and I'm just going to apply different colors. Because this is the last one that I colored, you notice that its fill and its stroke are what are showing up here in the color panel. I'm just going to grab the whole thing and drag it a little over. Deselect. OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two circles here. I'm simply going to drag over them with the selection tool. And when I do that, I have these two selected. So now I'm going to go and get the Shape Builder tool. So I'll click that. Notice what happens. This circle here with the green fill and the orange stroke, those are the colors that come out in my color selector. But what I'm really interested in is this. When I put my mouse pointer, you notice, first of all, my mouse pointer has, is kind of like a triangle with a little plus sign on it. And when I put my mouse pointer on either of these circles that I have selected in the overlapping area, you can see they're live. When I put my mouse pointer on the other circles, really nothing happens. So I'm going to drag. I'll put my mouse pointer on the first circle. I'm going to drag, and you see there's that line indicating what's being covered. And when I let go, boom, they combine. When they combine, because it's now one object, you see it has the fill of one of the circles and the stroke of the other circle. Well, I want to undo that, and I'm going to undo a bunch of times here. The shortcut to undo in every Windows application is Control-Z, and in every Macintosh application is Command-Z. So I have my originals back. Now what happens if I drag in the opposite direction? Instead of from the yellow one to the green one, I'll drag from the green one to the yellow one. Now notice the colors that I have here. When I drag in this direction, it's sort of the opposite. But again, it's one object with a combined fill and a combined stroke. I'll undo again. Now what if I click just on the overlapping area? You know, something goes on here. And I'm going to get the selection tool back. Just deselect everything. You notice it created a brand new kind of football-shaped object. Now, when I move that out of the way, you see that's now a cutout area. That's actually a hole. And you see also what happened to the stroke. They kind of, each object is just sort of smaller than it originally was. Again, let me undo a few times. 
Now, what if instead of combining, I want to go and separate, kind of like a cookie cutter? Again, I'll leave both objects selected. I'll go and get my Shape Builder tool again, so I have these objects are live. This time, I'll put my mouse pointer in the overlapping area, and I'll hold down the Alt key. If you're using the Mac, you could hold down the Option key. And you notice there's now a little minus sign attached to the mouse pointer. So now I'll drag from the overlapping area into the yellow circle, and notice it removes that yellow circle, and it uses that as a cookie cutter. So now I have that crescent shape. And I'll undo, and I'll drag the opposite direction. I'll again, I'll hold down the Alt key to get the minus sign, drag from the overlapping area into the green circle, and now the opposite happens. Pretty cool. And let me undo. What you probably don't want to do, though, is if you put your mouse pointer on one of the circles, hold down the Alt or Option key, and drag all the way into the other one, well, you end up deleting both of them. That's probably what you don't want to do. Let me undo that. Okay, that's great, but what if you want to combine all of these objects? First, let's go and get the Selection tool, and I'll just select all of them here. Now, when I get the Shape Builder tool back, you notice that I can't do like a lasso selection. I can only select in a straight line. So what I'm going to do is this. Notice I have them all selected. All the areas are live. I'm going to put my mouse pointer up here, and I'm going to hold down the Shift key. Now, with the Shift key, I'm going to do a marquee selection. Notice it's the Shape Builder tool that I have active, and now Boom, it's combined all of them. And how did Illustrator decide what fill to give and what stroke to give? Is the color that's in the color selector box. And really, don't worry about that too much. Don't let that put you off because you could always go and change it. I could always decide, oh, well, maybe I really want a yellow fill. And maybe I really want to take a navy blue stroke. That's fine. But let me show you one more thing. First, I'm going to deselect it. And I'm going to get a rectangle tool. I want to give this a background. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle. That's about yay big. I don't really care about the stroke. Actually, I'm going to remove the stroke, and I'm going to give it a fill just of a light tan, and I'm going to send this to the back. So I'm going to right-click, go to Arrange, and send to back, just to use as a background, and deselect it. Now let me get a circle. Now I'm going to put my mouse pointer roughly in the middle of this object. And you might see a little word there that says center. That's what they call smart guides, and it's simply telling me that I'm in the center of the object. I'm going to hold down the shift key again because I want to draw a circle, and I'm also going to hold down the alt key, or in the Mac it would be the option key, and that will let me draw a circle from the center point out. So the shift key is constraining it to a circle instead of a cigar shape, and the alt key is letting me draw from the center point out. Let's say something like about that. And I want to center it a little better, maybe. So without taking my finger off any of the keys or the mouse button, I'm going to temporarily put my thumb down on the space bar, just so I can move this around. Maybe like that. Now I'll take my thumb off the space bar, remove my finger from the mouse. And let me get the selection tool. And what I want to do is, you see the color that it has is the same color as the background here, which is what's in the color picker. So just so you're not confused, let me give it a completely different color. Maybe I'll just make it red. It doesn't really matter what color it is because it's going to go away in a moment. So I'm going to leave it selected, and I'm going to click the yellow thing behind it. Now we'll get the Shape Builder tool back. Now the Shape Builder tool doesn't recognize the background, but it does recognize these two objects. So I'll hold down the Alt key. Remember that gets a minus, that gets a deletion. And now I'll click the circle, and look what happens. It's cut a hole in it. Let me just get the selection tool back. Not only is there a hole, but the stroke in the center is the same as the stroke on the outside, because it's one object. If I go to the background here, let me just give that a different color. So you see, that's simply a background, so you know that you're actually seeing through this object that I created a moment ago. This is now one object. So yes, I could have done that with the old-fashioned Pathfinder tool, but you see how much more easy and more interactive and more intuitive the Shape Builder tool is in Adobe Illustrator CS5 and higher. I hope you enjoy it.